Greetings from the north woods of Michigan's Upper Peninsula. I'm Natasha, your plant-centered lifestyle guide, and you are tuned in to my weekly video where I provide tips and inspiration for those who are transitioning to a plant-centered lifestyle. I also provide ongoing support to those who are already living a plant-centered lifestyle. If you're new here, there's a great explanation of plant-centered living at the end of this video. Today, I would like to talk about our nations here in the United States' obsession with protein. Yes, we are absolutely obsessed with protein. There are tons of myths out there, but I would say the biggest one is just that we need way more protein than we actually do. Now, how many of you have gone into a restaurant, the kind of restaurant where you get to choose different items to put in your dish, it will often have a section that says, choose your protein. Choose your protein? Protein isn't a food. It's a macronutrient. And macronutrients are substances that our body can't make for itself. So aside from protein, there's also carbohydrates, fat, and water. Now, the really neat thing is, is that our bodies can, in fact, turn other foods into proteins that we can use in our body, into the macronutrient protein that we can use in our body. For example, if you eat fruit, the amino acids in fruit can be combined in the body to make protein. I mean, how cool is that? But again, popular culture in diet books and in social media and everywhere we look, there's always talk about more protein. We'll add protein powders to your smoothies or increase your protein in order to lose weight. Whatever it might be, what's really funny is that protein somehow is the answer to everything. And it's weird. So we're told, eat a lot of protein to lose weight. We're told, eat a lot of protein to gain weight. So what's going on here? Why this obsession with protein? Well, most people associate protein with animal products. And as we all know, there are many ways to get protein, and it isn't hard. It would be difficult to be deficient in protein unless, for example, we are simply not getting enough calories overall to sustain um, us. That's that period. Basically, if you're not taking in enough calories, then you're not getting enough protein. The hospitals and medical clinics in this country are not treating cases of protein deficiency. What they're doing is they're treating cases of protein excess. Now, our bodies want to maintain a perfect pH balance of seven. And when we take in animal foods, they are highly acid-forming foods in the body. And the body then starts leaching minerals from other vital organs and from our bones in order to balance out the acidity in those animal products as they're excreted from the body. And so it puts lots of extra strain on our system as that happens. We don't need extra protein. And in fact, extra protein makes our bodies work harder. It's not nearly as hard on our bodies to process proteins that come from plant-centered foods. Now, you know, I just read a book recently, and this book blew my mind. I have read extensively about protein, and I just can't tell you. Here it is. Go out and purchase this book. I listened to the audio. I then bought this copy um, for family members. It's called Proteinaholic, and it was written by Dr. Garth Davis. Now, Dr. Garth Davis is actually a doctor who treats those people who are severely obese and are coming in for operations like gastric bypass surgery. So he is very well versed in working with people who have weight issues and who have unhealthy relationships with food. And this is about his personal journey from being someone who was a proteinaholic himself to realizing just what our culture has become and that is obsessed with protein. So I would highly recommend go out and buy this book now, read it, and you will want to give it to every single one of your friends. 
because it's well researched. It's also very easy to follow. And it's written from a personal perspective from someone who absolutely knows what he is talking about. So again, folks, I, I can't say it strongly enough. We do not need nearly the amount of protein that popular culture leads us to believe that we do. You can get every bit of protein that you need from eating plant-centered foods with no additional animal products in your meals. So please, I encourage you, do further research, get the book Proteinaholic, and hey, I'd love to hear your opinion on this book. Thanks for listening. I hope that you have a great week. Take care, and I'll talk to you soon.